We know that the Moivre's theorem tells us that cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 3 is cos 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. Just multiply 3 by theta. Now, I'm going to expand this out using the binomial theorem. Let's look at the general case of a binomial raised to the power of 3. Here's the binomial theorem. We have 3c0 for the first term, for the coefficient of the first term. We raise a to the power of 3 and b to the power of 0. Well, b to the power of 0 is just 1, so we don't have to show that. The next term is 3c1 times a to the power of 2, so we drop the power of a. We decrease the power of a by 1 each time. And we increase the power of b, so we started off with b to the 0, then we have b to the 1, then we have b to the power of 2, then we have b to the power of 3, and we have a to the power of 0 in here, but a to the power of 0 is 1. So that's just a reminder of the binomial theorem, which is a separate area, really. Um, it's useful to just memorize this in words. It's the first term cubed, that's a cubed, plus 3 times the first squared by the second, plus 3 times the first by the second squared, plus the second cubed. That just might be useful. So I'll apply it to cos of theta plus i sine of theta cubed. So a is the first term, a is cos theta, we cube it. So that's cos theta times cos theta times cos theta, which we write as cos cubed theta. Then we have plus 3 times the first term squared by the second term. The first term squared is cos squared theta. Multiply by the second term, which is i sine theta. Then we have plus 3 times the first term, which is cos theta. Multiply by the second term squared. That's going to be i squared sine squared theta. And finally, we have the second term cubed. We have i sine theta cubed. That's i cubed times sine cubed theta. We cube each of these because they're multiplied together. So let's uh, break this down into a real and imaginary part. So this is all one complex number. Let's get its real part. The real part consists of terms that do not involve i, such as cos cubed theta. Cos cubed theta is part of the real part. i squared is minus 1, of course. So what we have here is minus 1 times 3 cos theta sine squared theta. That's minus 3 cos theta times sine squared theta. Now, um, that's it actually. The other two terms involve i. Look at this term here. We have i in it. We factorize i out and we're left with 3 cos squared theta times sine of theta. Now, what about this term here that has i cubed in it? What is i cubed? Well, i squared is minus 1, which means that i cubed is i squared multiplied by i. i squared times i to the power of 1 is i to the power of 3. But since we know that i squared is minus 1, we have minus 1 times i, which is minus i. So i cubed is just minus i. So this last term here is actually minus i sine cubed theta. And if we factorize i out, we're left with minus sine cubed theta. So that's what we get when we expand out cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 3 by just the binomial theorem. And of course by Demov's theorem it must equal the right hand side which is cos 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. So we have two complex numbers. This complex number here on the left hand side has a real part, which is all of this here, and it must equal the real part on the right hand side. And the imaginary part of the complex number on the left hand side is all of this here, and it must equal the imaginary part on the right hand side. So that's the only way that two complex numbers can equal each other. So let's write out the real parts. Now, we can get an identity for cos 3 theta. In other words, we, we can actually write cos 3 theta in terms of cos theta. Um, we can replace sine squared theta using the identity. I'll write it over here. Uh, cos, cos squared theta plus 
sine squared theta equals 1. So this is a very important identity. So we can use this to replace, to write sine squared theta in terms of cos squared theta. So that's what we will do here. So uh, make sine squared theta the subject of this identity. So sine squared theta will equal 1 minus cos squared theta. So now we can get cos 3 theta purely in terms of cos theta. So I'll just turn it around just to make cos 3 theta the subject on the left, just written on the left here, so it's easier to read. Uh, we have a 1 cos cubed theta here. We have minus 3 cos theta by minus 1 cos squared theta. That's going to give plus 3 cos cubed theta. So we have a 1 cos cubed theta, and we'll have a plus 3 cos cu cubed theta when we multiply these together. So that gives us 4 cos cubed theta. And then we have minus 3 cos theta by 1. That's just minus 3 cos theta. So here is an identity which gives cos of 3 theta in terms of cos theta. Okay, it's cos theta cubed here, but our angle is just theta. Uh, we can then get a similar identity for sine of 3 theta. So we equate the imaginary parts So we can actually write sine of 3 theta in terms of sine theta. But to do that, we need to replace, write cos squared theta in terms of sine squared theta. Again, we use this identity up here. So we rearrange this to make cos squared theta the subject. Cos squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. So we'll have 3 times 1 minus sine squared theta times sine theta minus sine cubed theta equals sine 3 theta. So I'll write sine 3 theta on the left here. Um, now, we have 3 times 1, which is 3. I'll write that first because it's positive. When we multiply 3 by minus sine squared theta by sine theta, we get minus 3 sine cubed theta. And we combine that with minus 1 sine cubed theta to get minus 4 sine cubed theta. Actually, I've made a slip here. Uh, I said 3 times 1, but of course I have to multiply by sine theta, so we have 3 sine theta. And uh, then we have minus 3 sine cubed theta. But the minus 3 sine cubed theta is combined with minus 1 sine cubed theta to give minus 4 sine cubed theta.